Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Histograph. Today we have an amazing journey ahead. We're going on a time travel trip, exploring the 50 most influential photos of all time. These pictures, handpicked by Time magazine, are more than just snapshots. They're moments that have shaped our history and human experience. So brace yourselves for a thrilling ride that's going to challenge, inspire, and stir your emotions. Let's kick things off. The Terror of War, 1972. Our first pit stop is in 1972 during the Vietnam War. This photograph, titled The Terror of War, captures the horror of conflict through the eyes of a nine-year-old girl, Fan Thi Kim Phuc. She's seen running, naked and terrified, following a napalm attack on her village. This striking image, snapped by Associated Press photographer Nick Ut, became a potent symbol of war's atrocities and helped shift public perception about the Vietnam conflict. The Burning Monk, 1963. The next snap takes us to 1963 in Saigon. This picture, known as the Burning Monk, features Thich Quang Duc, a Buddhist monk, self-immolating in protest against President Ngo Dinh Diem's regime. The shot, taken by Malcolm Brown, rocked the world and became a symbol of resistance and sacrifice. Starving Child and Vulture, 1993. We're jumping to 1993 in Sudan, where we come across a heart-wrenching image captured by Kevin Carter. This photo depicts a skeletal child on the brink of death by starvation, with a vulture ominously lurking in the background. The image sparked international outrage and raised questions about the responsibility of photographers in crisis situations. Lunch atop a skyscraper, 1932. Now, we're hopping back to 1932 in New York. This iconic photo, known as Lunch atop a skyscraper, shows 11 workers nonchalantly lunching on a steel girder, 840 feet off the ground, during the construction of the Rockefeller Center. The picture is a celebration of American guts and resilience during the Great Depression. Tankman, 1989. In 1989, Tiananmen Square in Beijing was the stage for a powerful act of defiance. This photo, known as Tankman, captures an unknown man blocking the path of a column of tanks a day after the square's massacre. The image, snapped by Jeff Widener, became a universal symbol of resistance against oppressive regimes. Falling Man, 2001. The next image is one of the most impactful of the 21st century. Taken by Richard Drew during the September 11th attacks in 2001, the photo known as Falling Man depicts a man plummeting from the Twin Towers. The image is a chilling reminder of the tragedy and horror of that day. Alan Kurdi, 2015. In 2015, the Syrian refugee crisis gained a face. The photo of little Alan Kurdi, a three-year-old boy who drowned as his family attempted to reach Greece, shocked the world. The image taken by Nilufa Demir sparked a wave of outrage and sympathy, leading to an uptick in refugee aid and acceptance. Earthrise, 1968. Now let's venture into space. In 1968, the Earthrise photo was captured by Apollo 8 astronauts, offering humanity its first color view of our planet from space. The image reminds us of our planet's beauty, fragility, and solitude. Mushroom Cloud over Nagasaki, 1945. We're back to 1945 in Nagasaki, Japan. This photo, taken by Charles Levy, shows the mushroom cloud resulting from the atomic bomb detonation. The image serves as a grim reminder of war's destructive power and the moment that changed history's course. VJ Day. In Times Square, 1945. Finally, for this first part of our journey, we arrive at 1945 in Times Square, New York. The photo, known as VJ Day in Times Square, depicts a sailor kissing a nurse to celebrate the end of World War II. The shot, taken by Alfred Eisenstadt, is a celebration of the relief and joy marking the end of the war. Hey there, are you enjoying the journey so far? This is just the beginning. Drop a comment telling us which photo you like the most. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you won't miss amazing videos like this one. Pillars of Creation, 1995. The Hubble Space Telescope captured the Eagle Nebula, a star-forming region 6,500 light-years from Earth in the Serpent's Corda constellation. The large columns are vast clouds of interstellar dust, shaped by high-energy winds blowing from nearby stars. Fire Escape Collapse, 1975. Stanley Foreman was working for the Boston Herald-American on July 22, 1975. 
when he got a call about a fire on Marlborough Street. He rushed to the scene just in time to see a woman and a child on a fire escape on the fifth floor. The fire escape gave way, and Diana Bryant, 19, and her goddaughter, Tiare Jones, too, fell. Bryant died from the fall, but her body cushioned the impact for her goddaughter, who survived. A Man on the Moon, 1969. Somewhere in the Sea of Tranquility, the small depression in which Buzz Aldrin stood on the night of July 20th, 1969, is still there, one of the billions of craters on the moon's ancient surface, but it may not be Aldrin's most enduring mark. Aldrin never minded being the second man on the moon, but he achieved a different kind of immortality. As it was Armstrong who was carrying the crew's 70mm Hasselblad, he took all the pictures, meaning the only moon man Earthlings would clearly see would be the one who took the second steps. Albino Boy, Biafra, 1969. Few remember Biafra, the small West African nation that broke away from southern Nigeria in 1967 and was retaken less than three years later. Much of the world learned of the enormity of this brief struggle through images of mass hunger and disease that took possibly millions of lives. None proved as powerful as British war photographer Don McCullen's image of a nine-year-old albino boy. Jewish boy surrenders. In Warsaw, 1943, the young and terrified boy with his hands raised in the center of this image was one of nearly half a million Jews stuffed into the Warsaw Ghetto, a neighborhood transformed by the Nazis into a walled compound of starvation and death. Bloody Saturday, 1937. The same imperialistic desire that was boiling in Europe in the 1930s had already swept across Asia. However, many Americans remained cautious about getting involved in a conflict in what seemed like a distant and alien land. But that opinion began to change as Japan's Rising Sun Army advanced toward Shanghai in the summer of 1937. Migrant Mother, 1936. This iconic photo was taken by Dorothea Lang during the Great Depression in the United States. It shows a worried mother, Florence Owens Thompson, looking towards an uncertain future with her children clinging to her. The image became a symbol of resilience and endurance during a time of great adversity. The Hindenburg Disaster, 1937. This photo was taken by Sam Scher during the Hindenburg Disaster, where the German airship LZ-129 Hindenburg caught fire and was destroyed during its attempt to dock at the Naval Air Station Lakehurst in Manchester Township, New Jersey. The image captures the terrifying moment of the disaster that resulted in the death of 36 people. Guerrillero Heroico, 1960. This iconic photo was taken by Alberto Corda and features Argentine-Cuban revolutionary Che Guevara. The image, with Guevara's determined gaze and starred beret, has become a worldwide symbol of resistance and rebellion. Dali Atomicus, 1948. This surreal photo was taken by Philippe Hulsman and features the painter Salvador Dali amidst three flying cats, a thrown bucket of water and floating furniture representing the concept of suspension. The image is a perfect representation of Dali's unique and surreal style. View from the window at Le Gras, 1826. This is the first known photograph captured by Joseph Nisfor Niepce, an inventor fascinated by lithography. Niepce used a camera obscura to capture the view from his studio window in France. The image, although rudimentary, is a milestone in the history of photography. Leap into Freedom, 1961. This photo was taken by Peter Leibing during the escape of Hans Conrad Schumann, an East German soldier, to West Germany. The image of Schumann jumping over a barbed wire barrier became a powerful symbol of the pursuit of freedom during the Cold War. The Hand of Mrs. Wilhelm Röntgen, 1895. This is the first known medical x-ray captured by Wilhelm Röntgen. The image shows the bones of Anna Bertha Röntgen, Wilhelm's wife. Wilhelm's discovery of X-rays revolutionized the diagnosis and treatment of diseases, flag raising on Iwo Jima, 1945. This iconic photo was taken by Joe Rosenthal during the Battle of Iwo Jima in World War II. The image of American Marines raising the United States flag became a symbol of the determination and courage of American soldiers. Emmett Till, 1955. This shocking photo shows the mutilated body of Emmett Till, a black teenager who was brutally murdered in Mississippi. 
Emmett's mother's decision to have an open casket funeral exposed the brutality of racism in the United States. Cotton Mill Girl, 1908. This photo was taken by Lewis Hine, a photographer working for the National Child Labor Committee. The image of Sadie Pfeiffer, a girl working in a cotton mill, helped draw attention to the exploitation of child labor. Hitler at a Nazi party rally, 1934. This photo was taken by Heinrich Hoffmann, Adolf Hitler's personal photographer. The image shows Hitler at the center of a Nazi party rally, surrounded by adoring troops. Gandhi and the spinning wheel, 1946. This photo was taken by Margaret Bourke White and features Mahatma Gandhi next to his spinning wheel. Gandhi encouraged his fellow countrymen to make their own fabric as a form of resistance against British goods. Fetus, 18 weeks, 1965. This photo was taken by Leonard Nilsson and shows a developing fetus. Nilsson's images revealed to the public for the first time what a developing fetus looks like, raising questions about when life begins. D-Day, 1944. This photo was taken by Robert Kapper during the D-Day landing in World War II. The image shows an American soldier's view of the dangers of war. Kappa's photo helped give the public an understanding of what soldiers faced during the invasion. The Pillow Fight, 1964. This image was captured by Harry Benson, who initially didn't want to cover a rock and roll story like the Beatles. However, after meeting them and hearing them play, he became convinced that he was onto the right story. The photo was taken at the George V Hotel on the night the band found out that I Want to Hold Your Hand hit num one in the US. It captures the pure joy, happiness and optimism that would be embraced as Beatlemania, lifting America's morale just 11 weeks after the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The Face of AIDS, 1990. This photograph by Therese Frere shows David Kirby on his deathbed, surrounded by his family. The image humanized AIDS, the disease that killed Kirby, at a time when it was ravaging victims largely out of the public sight. The photograph was published in Life in 1990 and showed how the widely misunderstood disease ravaged more than just its victims. First cell phone picture, 1997. Philippe Kahn, stuck in a Northern California maternity ward, built a device that could send a photo of his newborn to friends and family in real time. His invention forever changed how we communicate, perceive and experience the world and laid the groundwork for smartphones and photo sharing apps like Instagram and Snapchat. Raising a flag over the Reichstag, 1945 Yevgeny Khaldai, a Red Army soldier, arrived in the heart of the Nazi homeland armed with his Leica III camera and a massive Soviet flag. He snapped a photo of three soldiers raising the flag over the Reichstag, symbolizing Soviet victory. Famine, in Somalia, 1992. American photographer James Nachtwe went to Somalia on his own to document the growing famine in the country. He brought back a series of chilling images, including the scene of a woman waiting to be taken to a feeding center on a donkey cart. Muhammad Ali vs. Sonny Liston, 1965. Photographer Neil Leifer captured perhaps the greatest sports photo of the century when 23-year-old Muhammad Ali faced off against 34-year-old Sonny Liston. The perfectly composed image captures Ali, radiating the strength and poetic audacity that made him the nation's most beloved and loathed athlete. The Situation Room, 2011. In this photo, White House photographer Pete Souza captures the moment when US forces stormed Osama bin Laden's compound in Pakistan and killed the terrorist leader. The photo shows those who watched the covert operation in real time, including President Barack Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Newt Denol, 1963. Malian photographer Malik Sidibe captured the subtle and profound shifts that were reshaping his nation after the end of French colonial rule. In this photo, Sidibe captures the quiet intimacy of a young couple at a nightclub on Christmas Eve, 1963. Saigon execution, 1968. Associated Press photographer Eddie Adams was on the streets of Saigon on February 1st, 1968, two days after the forces of the People's Army of Vietnam and the Viet Cong had launched the Tet Offensive. Adams captured the moment General Nguyen Ngoc Loan, head of the National Police, shot and killed Nguyen Van Lem, captain of a terror squad. Black Power Salute, 1968. 
The Olympics are meant to be a celebration of global unity, but when American runners Tommy Smith and John Carlos stood on the podium at the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City, they were determined to shatter the illusion that everything was fine in the world. Just before the Star Spangled Banner started to play, Smith, the gold medalist, and Carlos, the bronze winner, lowered their heads and raised their gloved black fists in the air. The message couldn't have been clearer. Before saluting America, America must treat blacks as equals. We knew what we were going to do was far bigger than any athletic feat, Carlos later said. Soweto Uprising, 1976. A few outside South Africa paid much attention to apartheid before June 16, 1976, when several thousand Soweto students set out to protest the introduction of mandatory Afrikaans language instruction in their township schools. Along the way, they gathered youths from other schools, including a 13-year-old student named Hector Peterson. The Horse in Motion, 1878. When a horse trots or gallops, does it become completely airborne? This was the question photographer Edward Mybridge set out to answer in 1878. Railroad tycoon and former California governor Leland Stanford was convinced that the answer was yes and hired Mybridge to provide the proof. Abraham Lincoln, 1860. Abraham Lincoln was a little-known Illinois congressman with national aspirations when he arrived in New York in February 1860 to speak at the Cooper Union. The speech had to be perfect but Lincoln also knew the importance of image. Before taking the stage, he stopped at Matthew B. Brady's Broadway photography studio, Iraqi Girl at Checkpoint, 2005. Moments before American photojournalist Chris Hondros took this photo of Samar Hassan, the girl was in the back seat of her family's car as they drove home in the Iraqi city of Tall Afar. Gorilla, in the Congo, 2007 Senkwekwe. The Silverback Mountain Gorilla weighed at least 500 pounds when his corpse was tied to an improvised stretcher and it took more than a dozen men to hoist it into the air. Brent Sturton captured the scene while he was in Virunga National Park in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Bandits Roost, Mulberry Street, circa 1888. Late 19th century New York City was a magnet for the world's immigrants and the vast majority of them found not streets paved with gold but near subhuman misery. While polite society turned a blind eye, brave reporters like Denmark's Jacob Rees documented this Gilded Age disgrace. Milk Drop Coronet, 1957. Before Harold Edgerton set up a milk dripper alongside a timer and a camera of his own invention, it was virtually impossible to take a good photo in the dark without bulky equipment. It was equally futile to try to photograph a fleeting moment. But in the 1950s, in his lab at MIT, Edgerton started tinkering with a process that would change the future of photography. Surfing hippos, 2,007 billion human beings take up a certain amount of space, which is one reason why true untouched nature is rapidly dwindling worldwide. Even in Africa, where lions and elephants still roam, the room for wild animals is shrinking. This is what makes Michael Nichols' photograph so special. Nichols and National Geographic Society explorer Michael Fay embarked on a grueling two-mile trek from Congo in Central Africa to Gabon on the west coast of the continent. Moonlight, The Pond, 1904. Is Edward Steichen's ethereal image a photograph or a painting? It's both, and that was precisely his point. Steichen photographed the wooded scene in Mamaroneck, New York, hand-colored the black and white prints with shades of blue, and may even have added the glowing moon. So there you have it, folks. We've journeyed together through time and space, exploring moments that have shaped our world in ways we could never have imagined. Each of these photographs tells a story, a tale of struggle, triumph, humanity, and above all, change. They serve as a reminder that we are part of something larger, a complex and ever-evolving tapestry of events and emotions. But remember, history isn't just something we read about in books or see in old photographs. History is happening right now in this very moment, and we're all a part of it. Each decision we make, each action we take is contributing to the story of our time. So I challenge you. What will you do to leave your mark? How will you influence history? Think about it. And while you're at it, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating journeys through history. Because at the end of the day, history isn't just about the past, it's about us. And together, 
we can make a difference. Also, I invite you to click on this video that's popping up on the screen right now. You're going to like it. Until next time, folks. Thank you.